we've already seen that you can visually represent a vector as an arrow where the length of the arrow is the magnitude of the vector and the direction of the arrow is the direction of the vector. And if we want to represent this mathematically, we could just think about, well, starting with its, starting from the tail of the vector, how much does, how far away is the, is the head of the vector in the horizontal direction and how far away is it in the vertical direction? So for example, in the horizontal direction, you would have to go, you would have to go this distance. And then in the vertical direction, you would have to go, you would have to go this distance. Let me do that in a different color. You would have to go this distance right over here. And so let's just say that this distance is two and that this distance is three. We could represent this vector, and let's call this vector v. We could represent vector v as an ordered or an ordered list or a two tuple of, so we could say, we move two in the horizontal direction and three in the vertical direction. Three in the vertical direction. So you could represent it like that. You could represent vector v like this, where it is two comma three, two comma three, like that. What I now want to introduce you to, and we could come up with other ways of representing this two tuple, is another notation, and this really comes out of the idea of what it means to add and scale vectors. And to do that, we're going to define what we call unit vectors. So unit, unit vectors. And if we're in two dimensions, we define a unit ve vector for each of the dimensions we're operating in. If we're in three dimensions, we would define a unit vector for each of the three di dimensions that we're operating in. And so let's do that. So let's define a unit vector i and the way that we denote that it is a unit vector, the way that we denote it's a unit vector, is instead of putting an arrow on top, we put this kind of hat on top of it. So the unit vector i, if we wanted to write it in this notation right over here, we would say it only goes one unit in the horizontal direction, and it doesn't go at all in the vertical direction. So it would look something like this. It would look, it would look something like that. That is the unit vector i. And then we can define another unit vector. Let's call that unit vector, or it's typically called j. J, which would, look, which would go only in the vertical direction and not in the horizontal direction. And not in the horizontal direction, and it goes one unit in the vertical direction. So this went one unit in the horizontal. Now j is going to go one unit. j is going to go one unit in the vertical. So j, just like that. Now. Any vector, any two-dimensional vector, we can now represent as a, as a sum of scaled up versions of i and j. And you say, well, how do, we, how do we do that? Well, you could imagine vector v right here is the sum of a vector that moves purely in the horizontal direction that has length two, and a vector that moves purely in the vertical direction that has length three. So we could say that vector v Vector v, let me do that same blue color. Vector v is equal to, so if we want a vector that has length two and it moves purely in the horizontal direction, well, we could just scale up the unit vector i. We could just multiply two times i. So let's do that. It's equal to two times our unit vector i. So two i is going to be this whole thing right over here or this whole vector, let me do it in this yellow color. This vector right over here, you could view as 2i. And then to that, we're going to add 3 times j. So plus, plus 3 times j. 3 times j. Let me write it like this. Let me get the color. 3 times j. Once again, 3 times j is going to be this vector right over here, and if you add this yellow vector, if you add this yellow vector right over here to the magenta vector, you're going to get, notice we're putting the tail of the magenta vector at the head of the yellow vector, and if you start at the tail of the yellow vector and you go all the way to the head of the magenta vector, you have now constructed vector, you have now constructed vector v.
So vector v, you could represent it as a column vector like this, 2, 3, you could represent it as 2, comma 3, or you could represent it as 2 times i with this little hat over it, plus 3 times j with this little hat over it. i is a unit vector in the horizontal direction, in the positive horizontal direction. If you want to go the other way, you would multiply it by a negative. And j is the unit vector in the vertical direction. As we'll see in future videos, once you go to three dimensions, you'll introduce you'll introduce a k. But it's very natural to translate between these two things. Notice 2, 3, 2, 3. And so with that, let's actually do some vector operations using this notation. So let's say that I define another vector. Let's say it is vector, let's say it's vector b. And vector b is equal to, I'll just come up with some numbers here. Vector b is equal to negative 1 times i, times the unit vector i plus plus 4 times the unit vector in the horizontal direction. So given these two vector definitions, what would the vector, what would be the vector v plus b be equal to? I encourage you to pause the video and think about it. Well, once again, we just literally have to add corresponding components. We could say, okay, well, let's, let's think about what we're doing in the horizontal direction. We're going two in the horizontal direction here, and now we're going negative one. So our horizontal component is going to be two, two plus negative one, two plus negative one in the horizontal direction. And we're gonna multiply that times the unit vector i. And this, once again, just goes back to adding the corresponding components of the vector. And then we're gonna have plus four, plus four, or plus three plus four, let me write it that way plus three plus four, three plus four times the unit vector j in the vertical direction. And so that's going to give us, that's going to give us two, I'll do this all in this one color, two plus negative one is one i, and we could literally write that just as i. Actually, let's do that, let's just write that as i. But we got that from two plus negative one is one. One times a vector is just going to be that vector. Plus, plus three plus four, seven, seven, j. And to see this is exactly how we saw, how we saw vector addition in the past, is that we could also represent vector b like this. We could represent it like this. Negative one, negative one, four, negative one, four. And so if you were to add v to b, you add the corresponding terms. So this should be equal to, if we were to add corresponding terms looking at them as column vectors, that is going to be equal to 2 plus negative 1, which is 1, 3 plus 4 is 7. So this is the exact same representation as this. This is using unit vector notation, and this is representing it as a column vector.